In this tutorial, I'm going to quickly explain all the different fields in Easy Data Feed so you can understand how to use them. So if you click on File, you can load your processors through the web. You can upload multiple files if you have a lot of processors. You can load a file directly. You can save it. Now, if you save it, all the settings will be saved. So if you want to preset the settings and then you can load it later, you can do that. This is to order a new data feed. On the settings, you can limit how many records will be scanned in case you want to do the testing. This is what URL you're going to be scanning. If you want to load specific brands, you can just press the load button. It'll preload all the brands that are available for extracting data for. Then if you click on the down arrow, you can choose which ones you want to do. The speed is how fast it's going to scan the website. So the threads is how many times it's going to go in at the same time. So if you say five, it's the same thing as having five applications open. And delay is how long it's going to wait before making the next hit. For the proxy, if you want to use proxies to access the website, you can do that as well. For the website login, this is in case you need to log in to a wholesale portal, you would provide the information here. Schedule, you can schedule how often the processor is going to run. You can set up different intervals and it also tells you when the next run is. Local settings, so this is to save locally on your computer. You can install Dropbox and if you save it into a Dropbox folder, it's actually going to save online through a URL. You have to save locally. You have to provide a path and a file name and it's going to work. Now, if you don't put override file, what's going to happen is it's going to put a new date every time a file is saved. If you say override file, it will not put a date and it's going to actually override the file every time. If you say save by brand, if you have, let's say, 100 different brands that you've scanned and you click save by brand, it's going to separate every brand into its own Excel sheet. For the FTP settings, this is the same thing as saving it locally, except this is saving it to an FTP. So you can provide a URL, login, password, file name. You can do the check connection to make sure it works. Export settings is custom headers that are available in your processors. So the way this works is you can add them all, you can clear them all, and you can check on check them all. This is to add a new record, delete a record. Now the way it works is like this. If there is a yellow field, that means this is a hard-coded value that you can provide and it's not a part of the processor. This is strictly just to help you build up your spreadsheet. If this area is gray and this one is available, that means that this is a processor field which cannot be hard-coded. You have to choose one of the options here. So basically, if you don't choose the option, this becomes a regular text field with a hard-coded value. If you do provide an option, then this field cannot be filled out. And then whatever you have checkmarked here, this is what's going to be exported or uploaded or saved on the final spreadsheet. Images, you can download the images from whatever site you're going to be pulling them from. And sometimes the images are like in GIF format, so you can convert them into JPEG and you can even upload them to an FTP. The publish prefix is the path where the images will be located. And this is the path that's going to be pre-filled on Easy Data Feed when the URL will be overwritten. The global schedule, if you have, let's say, 20 different processors in the same file and you want to just schedule them all specifically to pull inventory data from it, you would use the global schedule and the global schedule would automatically override the regular schedule. And it works the same way. Special settings, if you need any custom enhancements done to Easy Data Feed in custom scenarios, we can code that in for you as needed. Here you'll see on top, this is what everything that it gets scanned. It tells you how many records it has. This is the log file. On the log file, if you click on this little icon here, you can actually sort by different processors. So in case you have a lot and you need to view an error, you can do that. This is to start the processor. This is to run them all if you have more than one. You can pause it. You can force to upload it to an FTP. You can force to save it on your local computer. You can save it as a CSV file as anytime you want whenever the data is here. You can clear all the data. You can clear the log. This is the data. This is the log. And again, you can cancel it. You could also change the speed on the fly. So in case, let's say, the processor is working too fast or too slow, you can modify this, press apply, and it's going to apply while the scan is still happening. So if you need any custom jobs done for your data extractor, when you order a new one through this button, you can request anything you like and we can accommodate for it.